The basis of artistic creation is not what is, but what might be. Not the real, but the possible. Artists create according to the same principles as nature, but they apply them to individual entities, while nature, to use a Goethean expression, thinks nothing of individual things. She is always building and destroying because she wants to achieve perfection, not in the individual thing, but in the whole. Rudolf Steiner. Welcome to the Lost Traveler podcast. I'm your host, Henry Cameron Allen. Today, I have a very special guest, a new friend that I am just meeting now, which is always very exciting, Michael Magruch. And he yeah. is an artist and he is a creativist. Uh, I don't know, how else would you describe yourself? You're from Austria and you live in California. I'm from, from Austria. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And I and. And I, I came from Austria. I was like 18 years old and moved to America because I was a sick child. And then I was dyslexic and dysgraphic. Wow. So the system which I know now, which I know now that I was fleeing the systems. I couldn't, uh, you know, because school, I was very good with humans, but school, I wasn't, I wasn't good in school. I wasn't good with, with hospitals. I wasn't good with, any system didn't uh, didn't work for me. What, and what, I when thought, you say okay, you're, freedom. You're dysgra dysgraphic. I'm going to pause you for a second because that's a uh, word I'm not familiar with. It's ha not hand hand eye coordination. No I'm hand eye coordination. I can't read my writing. Still can't read my writing. I'm so I a doctor. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, so I I can only uh, I mean if if I want to read my own writing, I have to type. Because if I write something and it's about half an hour, I cannot read it. So if I I can memorize what what I just did and what I've noted it within half an hour, but the half to half an hour is gone. Wow. You know, there yeah. are so many people who have these challenges from early childhood that you're right, yeah. the systems have no idea, the conventional systems, I should say. Yeah. Uh, have no idea how to meet. I, I had uh, dyscalculia, which is yeah. it's, uh, sort of numeric dyslexia. Yeah. And I yeah. never, never passed a math class in my life until I went yeah. to university and they said, oh, you really suck at math, don't you? And I said, yeah, I really do. They said, well, we have a hunch that you might have this condition called dyscalculia. We want to have you yeah. tested. I tested positive. That's what I had. And they said, we have a class for people like you. It's called Introduction to Logic. And it's mm. basically mathematics without using numbers. It's the whole, and that's- Like Montessori, that. Montessori does that. Montessori, Montessori does that. And I, I worked for years uh, in Steiner schools. Uh, Steiner, Steiner, Waldorf, Steiner. Yeah, yeah as, as a, yeah. not only an educator, but also administration. And mm -hmm. um, I really think that and they both came about at the same time for the same mm -hmm. reasons, you know, mm -hmm. um, both Maria Montessori and Rudolf Steiner were looking at the condition of the time. This was 100 years mm -hmm. ago. And mm -hmm. they noticed that the children were being educated differently by virtue of whether their parents were blue collar or white collar. And what mm -hmm. a travesty is that? Where does the individuality and the journey of system the division? Women? It's, it divides. And so they both, for different reasons and with different impulses, mm -hmm. right? Montessori was all about really focusing on the individual child. If they had a proclivity toward mathematics, then that's what they were focused on. Mm -hmm. Steiner was much more about a socially based education where mm -hmm. children are learning together in groups and mm. really focusing on those those seven year cycles. The first seven years are all about uh, uh, mimicry, right? Mm. Modeling behaviors and, and uh, the adults mm. modeling behaviors for children that they imitate. So imitation is the foundation. Then it moves into imagination. And so all of it kind of is born out of the individual imagination, but in a group setting where the children are all equal. They don't even teach reading as a formal lesson until second grade, mm -hmm. second year, because not every child is ready in-, in the Oh, I wasn't ready. I, I came a year later and I wasn't ready then. 
What, I, what kind I, I of was at seven. Did, I still, yeah. What kind of school did you attend? Just basically, there is a in 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 Austria. There is a a school. It's like high school, but with business, so it's a year longer. Uh -huh. And I took. It, that's usually I say instead of eight years, it's nine years. But for me, it took eleven years, and I pot and and I uh, I failed twice. You know. What about because your I couldn't... foundation? What about like preschool and first, like the primary school? No, no, preschool. Like I didn't have kindergarten, but I had, because I was sick. So I went, I went, um, right, I started my first grade was seven with seven. Mm -hmm. And then four years of that small thing. And then the high school was another five years. Wow. So but you're... with a business, with a business line, but because my dad was a businessman. Uh... So, made no sense i didn't learn anything I, I i swear to god what i learned is a little bit of english a little bit of french and and typing and yeah. typing was actually the the most helpful that i still use that made I it worthwhile anything i've learned <laughs> i'm a certified coach i've 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 used nothing of the certification of, of coach I, I have the, you know, the Steven Spielberg, that uh, screenwriter sc uh, class. Yeah. Every, that, I learned something there, but uh, very little. Yeah. Very, for the yeah. effort that it cost. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing. Well, and those, they are, they're out of reach for a lot of people. And, yeah. you know, I think, I think it's, it's, it's interesting. I, I grew up all around the world. My father was a cultural diplomat, essentially. He worked yeah. for uh, the State Department, but it was American, but it was um, a, a, a branch of the government called the USIA, mm -hmm. the U.S. Information Agency. Mm -hmm. Our first post was Vienna. Actually, we lived in mm -hmm. Grinzing, right, right near there. Grinzing, the oh, awesome, yeah. yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, oh you lived in the embassy? No. No, not in the embassy. We had a we had a villa in Grinzing, and um, yeah. I attended the international school uh, mm -hmm. in Vienna, and uh, and I was very young. I was the, the year you started. I was age seven, mm -hmm. and um, and then we were in the USSR and Peru, and Brazil, and Cuba, and we really got around, and and that in itself mm -hmm. was the education. I I don't really credit my formalized institutional education yeah. for yeah. giving me any tools really exactly to, to or very few i mean like yeah typing and you know yeah. little basic things like that but um when i found uh the steiner school the waldorf school in minnesota was where i i was based at the time and I was thinking about my, my, I just had a child and I was thinking about his future and thinking about my own journey with education, mm -hmm. how really traumatic it was mm -hmm. for me. And I did not want, and I know he had a unique path himself, mm -hmm. but I didn't, I wanted to remove the stones out of his path. Mm -hmm. I know that my stones are my own, right? They may not mm -hmm. have been the same challenges for him. And so, um, it was out of the blue that I met a, a Waldorf teacher and I had never heard of, I had lived in Vienna. I had lived in Europe, I lived all over. I had never heard of Waldorf education. I had never heard of Steiner. And for those of you listening, um, you know, he was Austrian born and mm -hmm. he was uh, kind of an interesting fellow. He was an innovator. He was in his way, a philosopher. He developed a, uh, a philosophy, um, called anthroposophy, anthropos meaning human, and sophia mm -hmm. meaning wisdom. Mm -hmm. and that sprung out of theosophy, the theosophical movement, mm -hmm. which more people are familiar with, that theos meaning divine or God, mm -hmm. and sophia meaning wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so when he was, he was actually the manager of the theosophical society in Germany around the mm -hmm. turn of the century, during the 20th century. And mm -hmm. And he kept feeling like there was something missing in it for him. It was all well and good and, you know, connecting humanity to, to the divine. But, but what was missing for him was the human being. Because without the human consciousness and the human physical experience, there would be no ability to conceive what we call the divine or the mm -hmm. spiritual. 
And so that was how this new movement was born. And the need for holistic, individualized education was so prominent in Europe at that time mm -hmm. that it made sense for him to start this school uh, at the Waldorf Astoria Cigarette Factory in Stuttgart, Germany in 1919. The director of the factory said to him after a lecture he heard, he said, if I found a school for the children of my employees at the factory, will you come and develop it? Will you come and be the head of it? And he said, of course. And it was the Waldorf Freie Schule, the Waldorf Free School. It was free of tuition because it was privately funded. Mm -hmm. It was independent, independent mm -hmm. of government influence and the systems and accessible to everyone in the community, not just the factory workers' children. So that was a model that was created now. It's, you know, there are over a thousand schools around the world. It's a very quiet movement. But I think for people like us, people who are uh -huh. creative inherently, people who are differently abled, right? We uh -huh. may have, have challenges in certain areas, but we also- We don't need to, we don't, we don't need to be all the same. Because, because as as you know, it's inclusiveness. If you want to experience real power, not just having money or or, or control, if you want to experience real power, just do a couple of podcasts. Because every podcast is different. Yes. For example, that's why I think it's uh, the, the the dialogue is a super human superpower. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I'm Queen B. Divine. The cure is conversation. And where can you find me? At bluntreflections.com, where I will be talking to guests from around the world that not only share their time, but their insights and their tips on how they became the best version of who they were meant to be. So if you're looking for a great story and a great time, check me out at bluntreflections.com. The cure is conversation. And remember, blase, blase means to tell your story. <laughs> I think uh, like creativity, the dialogue, and our adaptability. Uh, those are three superpowers humans are not conscious about. So it was, and, it was uh, dialogue. Uh, creativity and art 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 is the highest form of, yes. of of everything because you it's a, without without focus it is a co-creation from the physical non-physical into the physical it's a process yeah and those people that do that in that with the mindset obviously being oh, oh you know aware of that not thinking about the market because that's like if you do art and you like you like you do it for the market it's like creating a bicycle uh, so, so art is the highest, creativity is the second. Look at our world, what we create in good and bad. And I think the second one is dialogue. I think when humans talk, there is so much information exchanged. Even though, I mean, it would be better you and I would be in in person, right? But even on Zoom, there's so much information because you see hand gestures, you see that's uh, right. There's so much more. And then the third one is our adaptability. Adaptability. I don't know if you have uh, seen the Joe Rogan interview with that Korean woman. Uh, just you know, anybody interested? You, that that the system of North Korea and China, it, it, you know, so controlled. And what happened there is, is crazy. But it's not about oh, it's horrible. I feel sad for them. It shows you. Even if a um, system cannot get more controlled, humans still adapt to it. And that's why I say the adaption. And look at how much people, I see the Oscar real quick. I want to just say that yeah. the Will Smith incident, you know, the the Oscar is, is, is more controlled than the Pentagon, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> all the people in there are political correct system, navig as a system navigators. That's right. And then they go, minorities two minorities attack each other and the whole audience nobody knows what to do and it wasn't about them or anything it was just about the metaphor what that was you're talking about the slap around ruined. the world yeah yeah and, and 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 it ruined it for billions of people but it was because 
all these people were locked in and they all saw it. Jesus, there is no control. That's how I saw it. Yeah, you cannot control. Humans are limitless. They, they right. come up with things in the moment. So if I would freak out now, you would know how to handle me. Right. Not because you have learned it, because of your, because we are connected and you would know what to do. If somebody else freaks out, you would know what that person does. Or if you freak out, I know what to do. But right. I, you have to trust that in the inherent uh, wisdom that you have. Well, and something and that, that that's a great to... point. That's a great point. And that moment um, was really pivotal. And I was grateful that it happened. Not not because you know, not that Chris Rock got that smacked. Yeah, that's nobody should should be on the receiving end of violence. Yeah. However, I think that as nature does, nature strives for balance. And yeah. nature abhors a vacuum, right? If there's a space, nature will fill it, even with its mm -hmm. with dark matter, you know, or air. Yeah. Uh, you dig a hole in your garden, you come back in three days, and your, your hole is going to be full of water. It's going to be full of bugs. It's going to be full of dog yeah. shit. It's going to be full of leaves or yeah. whatever, right? But nature will fill it one way or another. And with that, that vacuum that that moment created. Mm -hmm. Just like the Me Too movement, it created yeah. a vacuum that allowed us to reflect on our humanity and to say, what are we doing? Who have we become? And what is the thing that we can control? This comes up a lot in my podcasts and in my life skills mm -hmm. education, my mentorship. Yeah. The thing that we can control is how we react to all these things. Yeah. Right. There is such a, a, a brilliant and devious uh, media control of the minds of people around the world. I'm seeing it all over the world. I have colleagues in every part of the world mm -hmm. and I see it everywhere. And to me, as you say, and as Steiner said, too, that art is the highest vibration. Mm -hmm. It's through art that we will see ourselves reflected. It will be how we affect change in the world. I'm a, a, a theater artist. I'm a mm -hmm. theater director. And mm -hmm. uh, we started a, a company with the intention before COVID to be a touring company mm -hmm. uh, called the Liminos Project. And it's all about the liminal space, the space mm -hmm. between spaces and mm -hmm. exploring through the art of theater, which includes music and dance and visual mm -hmm. and design and all lighting, um, the, the sometimes subtle dance between the human physical and the human spiritual. Mm -hmm. Talk about that, your experience of that liminal space. I think, I, 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 I love what you say because you say exactly what, what I say, it's, it's, why I say I think I need to say something before. What people don't know, they don't know. That is something we have to accept. Yes. And I think we have a lack of consciousness. We have not right now a crisis of we need more apps, we need more technology, we need more this. We have all that. What we need is being conscious of what we're doing. You know, uh, for example, that life isn't just you're a human and you have adversity. That's what it should be taught, not what system talk. Life should be sunshine. And if it isn't, we have a product to sell you, you know, pills, a Ferrari, a face job. You know, we, we have we have that. And I think art, you know, to, to see this this interaction, you can't think about your wife. When you're doing art, when you're creating, and you have that conversation going on with the non-physical, you have to be balanced, number one. You have to be in time space, and you have to focus. You have to have a tremendous presence. And this is where, what you actually should have all the time, you know, uh, being in the moment. And it pushes you can. your heart. Pushes you. You can yeah. have all the time. Yeah. That's that's a big yeah, thing. Yeah, but you get you get pushed, you know, or you go to mind mind constructs of the past and the future. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, but but you, absolutely you can have it. I mean, it can totally talk, you know teaches that. Just it's being acceptable. In the it's 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 accessible to everyone. Yeah. 
That's like part of wisdom. The wisdom is not, a, I sell wisdom like you do. Yeah. But wisdom is uh, available to everyone. If you plug yeah. in, you and I plug into the same sockets. I have a, might be a different uh, wording or whatever, but we, we plug into the same socket and it's, and it doesn't cost anything. And that's why I think people like you and me should be honored with money, not there should be a price. I have such a hard time to <laughs> to, to to quote a, a, a price yes. for what is priceless. Yes. Uh, it's like well, that, saying- What is a gift? It's, it's a gift. How can I take a, my gift that was somehow yeah. bestowed upon me and how can I charge yeah. other people when I want yeah. to share my gift? I have exactly. the exact I mean, same thing. And, and and here, for example, what would you call how much money should this, what we just talked till now, how much money should that be? $2, $100? How can you, it's impossible, humanly impossible to put a price. And that's what, the, what happened with art. Art yeah. people never define themselves. You know, Mozart played for the Duke and the King. Mm -hmm. uh, uh you know da vinci you know, um you know uh, the pope yeah. did for the not da vinci <laughs> michelangelo for the church michelangelo you for know yeah. so everybody everybody and the system didn't know either so the system just said hey live in the church live in our quarters we feed you the duke says we feed you to mozart and nobody ever defined art because yeah. it was not definable you know so be because of that i think because of that because how do you put a, a melody, somebody plays a melody and it transforms you, how are you going to put a physical price on it? It's not like exactly. you buy another apple. You know? When did that change, Michael? When did it we go? Never changed. Um, no, that never changed. That, no, that, no, no, no. I, I mean, changed the, the, but the, 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 the need to put a price on art, when did that change? Uh, because when, when we look at the time, it changed, it's very different. I think it changed in the 1900s. And it changed when people saw that, like, say, a duke or a church want to have something. And now churches, you know, were, were everywhere, you know. So they, you know, some some savvy businessmen, they say, hey, you know, you want a picture of this, of the Madonna, or you want a statue of this, or you want a music. And they were hiding and all these other musicians and they said hey come come with us and we sell you and or you sell yourself and there's a need where there's a need we we are we're very limitless in filling that need like you say a space opens up and you we feel right. it that's right and and i think that got to, and people just gauged it and and it's the, the most savvy people at the best artists, you know, and or the, the the best people. I don't even want to say best artists because there is no best art. Right, exactly. But the but 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 the one that is system conform that is that is right. You know, you can, you can say okay, Warhol is a great artist. No, he is system conform. The best, the highest system conform that the system accepts that is not too rude, is not too. Uh, out of the out of bounds it's just the fits the best in this adaptive a system adaptive and that then the system says okay you're an artist right um and all of a sudden you're an artist but most artists don't call themselves an artist they, they don't deem themselves they think and even the people that got famous still have a hard time calling themselves artists For years, I've turned on the television and the internet and have felt bombarded with messages of support, begging for money to support children in Africa, Afghanistan, India, all over the world, war-torn countries. Children are starving, not only for food, but for education and love in some cases. Um, I recently connected with Desire Child Care Organization uh, that transforms the lives of orphans and vulnerable Ugandan children in Kampala and Mukono by providing wholesome food, housing, health care, and creative arts education from early childhood to adulthood. Won't you join me in helping save orphans and vulnerable children? 
We can do it together, one organization at a time. I chose this one. Visit desirechildcare.org for more information. Thank you. I had a different experience. Hmm. I looked at 30. I looked at all my, my resumes and I had to write a new resume. And I said, damn, every job I did from DJ to fashion uh, uh, show producer to, to uh, advertising, everything was creative. To, to television, everything was creative. Yeah. And I said, I don't need the system to tell me that I'm an artist. I am an artist because 30 years I survived you know, with that, you know? you know? So I had a, I had an enlightenment in that. That was lucky. But coming back to your question about the liminal and um, what art, uh, it's, it's, what comes is the, it brings you back to humanity. It brings you back to our condition. Oh, art always brings you together. I mean, Look at any museum you go, uh, there is, it's a gathering. It, it, uh, when you when you are acting on, on your stage or so, it's a gathering. People, uh, Republicans, Democrats, every sex, every gender, everything. And, and it, this environment shows us pre-system environments. Because when you go to a museum, and I did research in museum in the gatherings of openings. Mm-hmm. People actually don't talk business in in, in the, I mean, rarely there could be always the exception, but right. I they, they say, hey, uh, here's my number because like they don't want to ex- they don't want to disturb the experience, so they they gather, you know, at the opening and they say usually what they say and it, I've I've seen that my whole life. Here's my number, call me. We don't talk about business now, but here's my number, call me. Uh, and everybody talks to each other, rich, poor, poor, rich. It's it's very inclusive. It's a microcosm of what humanity is. Yeah. And nobody looks shines a light on that. Uh, you know, I shine a light like a perspective, uh, pers- perspective, uh, my dyslexia, uh, perception you know, of of art as two things. And and I realized when when I said ninety seven percent of artists worldwide are on the poverty level, I said. Yeah. This is the highest form of human of human uh, ability is degraded to, because we have not ever defined system defined it. Right. Because you, you have to be either conscious or system defined it, and because we haven't system defined it, one of our most powerful abilities that everybody has in different forms is is ninety seven percent of worldwide artists are poor. Yeah. That's insane. And I thought, mm-hmm. I need to write a book about it. And that was the last, you know, the Smart of Art, that was the last book where I actually dove so in. I didn't know the answer. I right. just dove in and wrote and wrote. And all of a sudden it separated and it said, ah, that is the what we know as the art world is actually the business. It's the Walmart of art products. Walmart. What, <laughs> oh, yeah. Walmart of, <laughs> of art. That's not the but, art. But what we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but the but the art creation is really the power and the recognition. So there's two parts of it. The art creation is the powerful, which you know, if you experienced, right? And also what you experience as a buyer or art lover is you understand your own muscle that you observe from a theater play, music, or whatever, you see that interaction. You have no idea what it is. You react to this interaction between the non-physical and the physical, which is the product is music, art, poetry, theater, right? And you see that and you don't know why it moves you. Like when we started the first songs, you know, I heard Gimme Shelter from the Stones and I was freaking out. You know, I said, how can that how can I mean? There's no price I could have paid for when I was 15, you know, 14 years old. How to put this? I actually went to on vacation, and I took a Philips tape recorder. Yeah. And I heard that one song all the time, and it 
all, on, a, on an endless loop. I had a, a video cassette. I wore the cassette out, yes. and I just had that because I caught the song on the radio. I, I, I didn't have to record it yet. No, I used to do that too. I used to record the radio onto a cassette. And I just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it makes sense. And then I listen, the listen, the listen. But that's how, can you imagine today they always, they, they flame. Oh, how can I engage people? That's engagement. That's I it. mean, that's, it's a pure, it's purity of creation and purity of listening. And, and I kept listening and listening and listening. And, and I think that, you need to look from that standpoint, from that experience that I just explained. That's what art is. It's the connection, the inner connection of humans and exchange, almost like a dialogue, like the podcast we talked about. It, it is, but on a higher scale, because because it's it's not, not ver once we verbalize, it's physical, right? Once we, so this is like, it's not system defined yet. And that's why definitions are so horrible because when when you define things, you know, uh, they lose they lose it. They lose it as right away. When you know. say it's cancer, when right. you say it's cancer, it's it's can it's cancer. In the old days they said, Oh, you have a growth, we cut it off, no problem. Right. I remember actually my mom cut out a, had a growth on her hand a little. And we had a friend who was a he was a he was a, a, a surgeon. And outside on Sunday, they were always gathered. Everybody gathered. He came over, say, drink a little sleeve of it. Yeah. He, he cut it open. He numbed it, cut it open on free. And free anything. Cut it out. And, and there was not even a scar afterwards. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, this is how people treated stuff in like 40 years ago, 50 years right. ago. Right. And there are yeah. certain corners of the world where that still happens. But they're yeah. more removed. And, you know, it's really, it's interesting <clears throat> when you were talking about the idea of, of uh, being sort of an independent force for your own destiny. Um, mm -hmm. I, was, I was driving to university with my father, who just passed away last October from COVID and other yeah. complications. And yeah. so... Um, so I feel I can tell this story now, <laughs> but yeah. we were yeah, my, pa my mom is past doing everything. Yeah. So there's, yeah, they're there's listening. No, no. I know they're listening on their, on their, yeah. on their way, but, um, when I was, I must've been what, 17, 18 years old. And my dad and I were not particularly close at the time, but you're stuck in a car with your dad. You got to talk about something. And yeah. I was heading for really into my adulthood, my young adulthood. And I was thinking about the my question that was pressing on my mind was, does the career path that one chooses affect who they become in their adult life? Mm -hmm. I asked my father, I said, dad, do you like what you do? Being a diplomat, working for the government and the USIA? And he said, I loathe it. Mm. that's a heavy statement those three words yeah. not i love it i loathe it that deep mm -hmm. deep seething hatred of something mm. and i said well why do you do it mm. he said well son that's the price you pay when you want your parents Sacrifice. To out of you, ah. right? you talk about selling your soul. He, that's yeah. the price you pay when you want your parents to be proud of you and you want to make your way in the world and have money and live well, raise your family well, maybe travel the world. And I thought it was really interesting because my father, while he had very good points, he was very intelligent and, yeah. and very funny. Yeah. Um, and and charming as well he could be but he was also quite tyrannical not mm -hmm. only you know with the people who worked for him but um but with his family mm -hmm. right he was really a, an interesting dichotomy of personality i, I call him a, a mix between fidel castro benito mussolini and mel brooks mm -hmm. that's my father in a nutshell and i said i said Oh, well, what was your dream when you were my age or younger? Yeah. What did you want to be? 
And what's interesting is that he was only in his mid forties when we had this conversation and he had forgotten. He had totally blocked out what yeah, the system conditioning. I, I tell you. Well, he grew up in a very conventional system. And then 20 minutes later, he started weeping, tears streaming down his face. I had never seen my father cry in my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's the matter? Did I say something wrong? I'm, I'm sorry if I triggered something. He said, no, 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 it's okay. I said, what is it? He said, well, I just remembered. I wanted to be a photojournalist for National Geographic magazine. And in my mind, I thought, damn, you could have done that. And your parents would have been so proud of you and you would have traveled the world and you would add money. Everything that was a measure of success for him in his youth, yeah. he could have achieved to a happy end if he had only followed his heart. And that was the moment for me, a pivotal moment for me, when I made a contract with myself that I would never have this conversation with my children. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my proudest thing as a parent is that I never did. My son yeah. watched me do my work. You listed your jobs. To me, there's a difference between a job which is the thing you do mm -hmm. from plane you can't wait to get home from and forget about or go on vacation, mm -hmm. retire from. Mm -hmm. And then there's your work. Your work is your face in the world. It's your calling. It's not only the thing that calls to you, but it's the thing that calls from you. And, mm -hmm. and it's, it's that deep joy in your soul that meets a great need in the world. When you are able to identify I'm talking from a life skills perspective. When you're able mm. to identify where your deepest joy lives, whether it's making art or sweeping floors mm. or gardening, mm. right? Or science, whatever. If there's enough for everybody, it's as limitless as, as the human imagination, right? That's, that, and, that's and, and then you I identify the need in yeah. the world for what you're passionate about. Boom, yeah. there it is. It's that easy. People work too damn hard at it. Your generous sponsorship and individual support of the Lost Traveler podcast benefits the Lost Travelers Club, a charitable project under the fiscal sponsorship of United Charitable, a nonprofit 501c3 organization. The Lost Travelers Club focuses primarily on the needs of parents who have outlived their beloved children. We recently launched our new Brain Candy Project Wing, providing art supplies to children still struggling with critical or terminal health-related conditions. We hope to raise enough funds to launch Brain Candy, an arts and literature magazine created by and for these young people. Find out more at www.braincandy.online. Thank you. Shadow and Light LLC was established by Dave Roberts and Reverend Patty Farino, co-authors of When the Psychology Professor Met the Minister. Their mission is to empower individuals to transcend life challenges by integrating spiritual practices with psychology to achieve peace. They are available for individualized spiritual counseling virtual or in-person presentations and workshops to universities, organizations, and other interested groups, virtual or in-person book club meetings. For further information, go to psychologyprofessorandminister.com. <laughs> yeah, but I think they are not conscious that because, because you know, they find out, we talked about schools, and I think that fits perfectly. You know, more and more science come out and say we, about uh, this whole is in the context of inclusiveness. They right. say 97% of children are gifted better than anybody else. They have a gift, an ability that is better than anybody else on this planet. They are 100% of children. Yeah. And but after the system conditioning, which is in the first eight, you know, 10 years, it, that then that it's reversed it's only three percent are gifted and and the 90 percent the system adapted so system adapted and I medicated think, drugged yeah so that they can't and i think that that's that dichotomy 
is that, you know, his soul, his his essence, not the man, his essence knew you're the wrong path. But you know, ultimately you learn anyway. But 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 you are the wrong path, and the same time you are system glorified because being a diplomat is system glorified that's yeah. that's like and 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 i just realized that it doesn't matter how successful you are how famous you are does not do have anything to do with any so the, success is one thing uh fame is another uh you're uh making money making having money is another issue they are separate energies they're not intertwined. There's a lot of successful people that have no money. There are a lot of um, very, you know, they always have money. They're never successful or famous. Or happy. It, 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 yeah. <laughs> and that, yeah, or happy. And it never, that, like, like I said, the, the, um, you know, it should be always sunshine it is the biggest lie. And the second biggest lie is that you're working hard, you're going to make success. That's the biggest bullshit. That I've ever heard. Absolutely. Half of the workforce of the world makes five dollars fifty, and you tell me half of the world for it doesn't work hard. Yeah. Where is their success? Where is their fame? Where is their money? You know that it's such a bullshit lies. These system lies need to be finished. Well, and it's Why a form. It's a form of enslavement. And and I was just having a conversation this morning with uh, a friend in uh, Uganda who uh, I've been mentoring, um, he's developing a, a grassroots uh, organization that rescues orphaned and vulnerable children yeah. off the streets. <clears throat> amazing, amazing vision. And we were talking about the perpetuation of the enslavement of not only African people and children, of course, but but all around the world. There are more enslaved people on earth today than yeah. there ever have been combined Absolutely. in human history. And nobody's talking about it. Yeah. And I think a lot of that, it's a, the, it's a consciousness, but it's also, the, it's the distraction. There's so much information, it's overload information, right? How do you sort out, especially now, uh, more than ever, I think, how do you sort out what is know. true and for what is not true? And what you alluded to earlier about communication and dialogue in yeah. person. I mean, this is an audio only podcast, but yeah. you and I are recording on Zoom because I think it's important that we see each other, that we can pick yeah. up on the subtleties of you know our face expressions yeah. and our hand movements and yeah. our body language and all of that. Yeah. Right. But that comes across in the audio, I've been told, the warmth yeah. and the connection that comes from us being able to look at one another in our dialogue mm -hmm. and look mm -hmm. at all those other subtle sensibilities that we have as mm -hmm. human beings. Right. We don't get those through the media. We don't get mm -hmm. those when we are looking at a video that's prefabricated, that's not a live interactive dialogue. And I'm it's grateful for the tools of our time. I'm grateful for the tools of our time that we have developed this technology to be able to have a conversation mm. different sides of the world in the same moment. In that sense, the earth is flat again. Mm -hmm. I can have a, a conversation in the moment with people in eight different countries around the world in real time. Mm. That's that's astounding that we have achieved that. We are limitless. How are we using we are limitless. We are, we are limitless. limitless. And that's uh -huh. the message. We are every individual has the capacity to break out of the box. But we are not conscious that that's, uh, you ask me, I said, I have a, have a solution. If we get to people understand, have your true north being humanity and nature, because no system, human made, man-made system has, has given birth to humans, has yeah. given birth to nature. That's, right. that's why our habitat, the higher form of, uh, a living being versus a man-made machine. We are not God. We, we can't create ourselves. It's like, you know, and we also, God doesn't come down here, you know, if if you believe in that. He does not I say, hey, can you fix that? No. We, we the, the highest form of existence on this planet is nature. We are part of it. 
And we are the stewards of that nature, right? Because we can think and be self-aware. I'm going to push if back on that. I have a different perspective on that. I think it's very, um, uh, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but I, I think it's, uh, uh, who are we? to say that we have we are that's not a pushback we are that's not a pushback. That's it. stewards over nature because i i feel like you know if we are here to protect nature the natural world from anything it's ourselves we have to protect nature from ourselves yeah but it's not that's a pushback a huge, that's, that's, that's huge. Absolutely... well no when i just in terms of we are stewards yeah. for nature no it's the other way around nature is stewarding us we couldn't live, we couldn't exist without the natural world, but guess what? The natural world can certainly exist without us and did for billions yeah. of years and will continue let, to, no matter what we do. Let, to it. let me rephrase it. We are the stewards of nature's so that our species doesn't get extinct. We're not doing a very good job of that. <laughs> I know, but, but no, no, because we are, because we, love shiny objects yeah and shiny objects uh we, we are so fascinated by our own ability so because we are not in touch with our limitlessness and that's why art shows you that but we are not in touch with our limitlessness and therefore when we when we when when you create a, a tesla car yeah i say oh wow this is so great you know i'm nothing you know and, and the system shames you all because the system works 24 7 but on the other side of systems are humans we forget that we are not conscious. Really, we, we submit to systems. Eighty thousand people in Ukraine die, soldiers. Right. We submit to systems, and on the other hand, with Apple, we have Nike, we have all these wonderful things, and we we that. But those are here, like Elon Musk and 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 uh, Jeff Bezos. They are just here to show us our limits that are okay if the, this guy can do it i can somehow do it it doesn't need you need to be alien musk you don't need to be apple you don't need to be in ukraine and kill or get right. killed you know right, right right so the submitting to a system that's where the consciousness is broken we love shiny objects we are very much if there's a system it's not complete we create another one to complete the system because it's so limited and we are so overwhelmed with systems and media and everything we losing which we created more, and more <laughs> we, we're losing more and more our power because we think that is better and the system works 24 7. we need to balance like you said everything is balanced we need to sleep. System doesn't need to sleep. And every system is based on the economic principle. And the economic principle has to make imbalance. It not it's not it's not bad. It's great, but it's yeah, it, yeah, yeah. we're not conscious of it. Yeah. And that's why eight people own 40% of the planet. It, it well, just drives it, more and more in the in the imbalance. It's ascribing value. It's how we ascribe value to things. And we, I think art was born the first time ever a human being noticed a pattern. Exactly. The first, that, to me, in my imagination, that is how art was born. That a human being noticed a fungus on a rock in a beautiful pattern that looked kind of like a flower that they saw yeah. the other day, right? And so it was a, a mirror of, of something that they could recognize. And we strive mm -hmm. as human beings for recognition, not only to recognize things for our own comfort level, but mm -hmm. also, I think, inherently, to challenge ourselves to replicate the things that we see, right? Mm -hmm. It starts, like I said, in those first seven years, it's all imitation. That's the foundation of our development, not of education as we know it, as we've uh, imposed it, right? Because the educational system generally, the like the state and national schools are all basically the same system that were designed to get children out of nature and into factories. Exactly. The industrial revolution, right? Yeah. It was, they were designed yeah. to dehumanize 
what was mm -hmm. so deeply human. And so when we look at, which all we have left now is literature and paintings of those bygone eras before the industrial revolution. Did the world yeah. have problems then? Absolutely. Were they the exact same problems that we have today? Absolutely. But with a different lexicon, mm -hmm. right? There was mm -hmm. control. There was control from the from the Pope. There was control from from yeah. you know governments and kings who deemed themselves gods, mm -hmm. right? And lording over and stewarding these ignorant, mm -hmm. savage people. People couldn't read mm -hmm. for for thousands of years, except if you were a a scholar or you were given a job as a scribe. Right, or but you couldn't be having a different opinion as a science either. Even if you're a scribe, if you have a different opinion, you got inquisition. Boom, but that was gone. no that was no measure of intelligence. That was no measure of imagination. That was no measure of a person's passion or creativity. When you're given a job, it's like you see a lot in communist countries, which in which yeah. I've lived a couple. I lived in Cuba. I lived in in USSR, yeah. where you are told this is what you are going to do, and you're going to do it with excellence system it told, it's insane it's, it's insane. all about value it's putting value and what is that value attached to i think it's attached to self esteem right yeah. when we were talking earlier about the kings who would feed yeah. and house and clothe the artists yeah. right to make sure that they had a livelihood and yeah. they could live in a dignified manner right by yeah. producing what was coming through them or out yeah. of their imaginations Mm -hmm. Because people would equate art and creativity because it is the highest frequency. Yeah. You were a, a benefactor, right? Or a patron of yeah. the arts that elevated your status, even if you were not the one who was executing the creative art form. It if still you, does today. You, it's still today. If, if yeah. you, it, it, it's exactly, if you want to go, it, the fastest way in social uh, to uh, social relevance is to buy art. Yeah. Nothing gets you faster in social relevance than uh, buying a big uh, work of art or something or making a big smash at Sotheby's or something. That's you right. You are right invited everywhere. You know? That's right. And it's not the artist that is elevated. It's the buyer. No. Right. So and buyer. that is this, that you're right. That's exactly the same. But what is not the same that that my theater company and and other things that I'm involved in or trying to do is to elevate the artist to a dignified life, to make the artist the one who is at the top of the status ladder, yeah. right? And that includes educators, teachers yeah. that are so incredibly underpaid for their work and mm -hmm. of course they were cogs in the wheel they're they're caught in a system that they can't control unless you are in one of the things that fascinated me getting back to waldorf schools is the first year of a teacher training the entire first year mm -hmm. of a teacher training is in your own biography mm -hmm. how wow. cool is that know thyself mm -hmm. right like the oracle yeah. of delphi know yeah. thyself know thyself that's the biggest message, I think, that for all time, it's been there. The question was asked thousands of years ago, but it's a question we need to keep presenting. And why? See, I, I would say, why is it know yourself? It's know yourself is to find your uniqueness, how you fit in, in the whole. Yes. That, that's, it's not just know that. What does it mean, know yourself? No, say, yeah. <clears throat> you know, know yourself in systems? No. No. It is. It's connected to humanity. You get born, and obviously, which which is like art. You get born. There's energy in. That's why your body grows. It's not already adult when you're born, right. and, and you are fully functional. So right. you adapt to you, you tap this limitless energy into a physical body, and you might be sick like I was, you know, and, and have hard time to integrate all that stuff. Right, and you need to know yourself. And saying what is, even if you're the worst sick or, and, and dyslexic and all that stuff, how can you fit in into the fabric of human fabric? And that's why you have to know yourself. Because it's in the discovery 
and getting the feedback with, from other humans that you find yourself, you know, it, it, you come to a group of humans they, and you have no chance. They, 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 they smash you. Okay, go back. Don't, don't, don't try to push. <laughs> go back, go somewhere else. Balance, pain mitigation, range of motion, athletic performance, focus, memory, immune system support, and REM level of sleep. All this and more made possible affordably with no pharmaceuticals, no injections, or invasive treatments. Just socks, insoles, and patches made stronger with the tactile patterning of Vox Life products. Scientifically proven to work and guaranteed. Now in the USA, Canada, and the UK. Visit www.dianedinkmeyer.voxlife.com. That's Vox, V O X, Life. You'll be glad you did. Right. So, where you, where you fit, where can you contribute? You know, um, if you can't contribute in, in whatever in, in Austria, then go to America. If you cannot, right. you know, if I cannot go to America, go to Cuba. Do and something. It's not, it's not fit as in I'm going to try and force myself to fit into exactly. a prefabricated box that someone built already yeah. that is not yeah. designed for this body, right? When I was in yeah. high school, I wanted to make yeah. a t-shirt. I may still someday, but it's my, my Skype name. It's too big for the box. I'm too big for the yeah. box, right? So it's not a question of where do I fit in in that sense, but what what it is, and I, I really agree with you, is that how do I weave my unique thread into the fabric of existence while yeah. I'm here in the physical, right? Yeah. Physics shows us that that everything is energy, right? Everything. Yeah. Bottle yeah. of water, your glasses, yeah. you, yeah. your dog, your painting, everything is energy, right? Mm -hmm. And energy cannot be created and energy cannot be destroyed. It just yeah. transmutes, it changes form yeah. from one state to another. So death is not a real thing. Death is illusion, complete illusion, right? Yeah. We may shed the physical but our energy remains the, the you that makes you you, right? That part yeah. of yourself with a capital S is perpetual. It is eternal. And when we talk about God, and this is something, it's been a very, I could do a whole other podcast with you about this. Yeah. We should come back and yeah. do a part two. But yeah. um, this whole concept of God to me is, is, is one thing. It's not... A bunch of different pieces of a, of a machine we are all part of the the divine mechanism the whole yeah. the whole and we all are connected if we know it or not <laughs> we're, we're not are, separate we're from nature we're not separate we're not separate yeah. from the cosmos we're made of all the same material yeah right physically we're all made of star stuff we're all made of the same things right yeah we have we share 60% of our DNA with bananas. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Right? So, so when we start looking at the world through that lens of yeah. connection versus segregation from one another, mm -hmm. then we start seeing the reality, which is there's no such thing as race, that mm -hmm. all of what we know as physical humanity yeah. sprung from one place on this planet right, yeah. Eastern Africa, that we all share common DNA. We are all related. And mm -hmm. we have no disconnect from anything else around us. And so when we start looking at all- Even if we, if we are disconnected, even if we are disconnected, we, we, feel we disconnected. are not disconnected. Yeah, if we yeah. feel disconnected because we've been told we're disconnected over yeah. and over and over, the more yeah. you hear something, the more you're apt to believe it. Whether it's positive, because or you are a, a herd animal, you you are a herd animal, and you believe when when some when when the herd says, "Oh, Apple is the best company," or "This is the best thing," yeah, you 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 are DNA driven 
to believe that because you go, you know, unconsciously that you're part of the whole, but you act as singular. That's and right. the, and and the system is plugged in between that and says we make you the whole. You are happy when you do this. You are the, you know you're the greatest when you do this. And not everybody can be the greatest. I mean, uh, you have a different. It's not about greatness. Yeah. And I agree with you totally, because man-made limited systems could not handle first genders, so they separated us right. in uh, in, in uh, woman and man. That's then. Right. They started, then the, the English, you know, went all over and it said, oh my God, we have these black people or these Asian people or whatever. So they are racist. We we, we separate. And, you know, the English are, are the perfect. <laughs> I mean, they, they have to, their system, they're systematic. I mean, a Viscount knows what the Baron is allowed to do in right. society. I mean, this is insane. I yeah. mean. It is the segregation in 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 in, in the royal team, and yet the it's insane. It is absolutely insane. But the brilliance of it is, in my estimation, is that it had to happen. It had to manifest. Mm -hmm. of, of course, slavery had to happen. The the killing and murder of and and this indigenous peoples all around the world, the, the, the appropriation of other cultures that my father was instrumental in. He When he started yeah. working for the USIA, there was no McDonald's outside of the US. Yeah. It was a time, people, listeners, that yeah. there was no fast food anywhere but America. And yeah. what America became genius at through this agency was taking all this appropriated culture from around the world, from mm -hmm. music to sports, to cuisine, to industry, and art, wrapped mm -hmm. it up in a big, shiny red, white, and blue ribbon and sold it back to the people as American. Yeah. yeah. The best of the best, because yeah. we have a prettier box than yeah. you ever had. And this is what makes it American. And, and I think all of this stuff had to happen because you know, while we can talk about the gloom and doom and the, the corruption in every government around the world and the enslavement of people and human trafficking and debt, we are also at very likely the most peaceful time that we know in human history, that we have the capacity to dialogue with one another, yeah. to talk about the things that challenge us, to be inspired by art. Art, whether it's good or bad, however you label it, yeah. if it gets a reaction from you, it is art, mm -hmm. positive or mm -hmm. negative. You could be disgusted, you could be elated, you could be sexually aroused, right? Yeah. It, yeah. If, if, if something elicits a reaction in a human being, that to me is art and that is priceless. That is part of the mm -hmm. journey of, of becoming sensitive to your own reactions. To me, that's what knowing thyself is, is understanding mm -hmm. why am I triggered by that thing? I can't control the media. I can't control the government. I can't control the situations of poverty and and you know, uh, uh, despair and, and and all of those things that we struggle with. I can't control any of those things outside of myself. But what I can control 100% is my reaction to it and understanding why I am triggered by it. There's a saying that nobody's perfect. I call bullshit. I say everyone mm -hmm. is perfect. Everyone yeah. is as perfect as they can be in the moment that they are in. Because if you were meant to be otherwise, honey, you would be otherwise. And you'd be in a different moment having a different conversation with somebody else. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be listening yeah. to this conversation. So uh -huh. that's that's where I'm coming from. And I know, I can't believe it's already no, been- It's, it's kind of concurrent with mine. Because <laughs> I say, when you look at art, you should ask you, when you walk into a museum, for example, and you're drawn to this, go there, go where you're drawn to, look at it, but ask the question to get more out of it. 
you know, ask the question, why am I attracted to that pink? Right. Why am I attracted to this yeah. this this body? Why am I attracted to this landscape? Why in what context? Why is that me? And you because this the question doesn't need to be answered. You ask the question. That's right. There's so much power in, in art, you know? You leave because with it's more not questions. defined. It's not a phone. Yeah. It's not a phone. It's not a it's not you know, it's not a car. It's 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 something fresh. Something that opens you up from the hassle and system thing that you go in and look at, 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 at the Koenig and you look at it and it says, what the fuck is this? That's right. I'm so attracted to it, you know? That's right. I'm always happy when I go see a play. I'm yeah, always exactly. happiest when I leave with more questions than I came with. Because that exactly. is the, the, to be introspective and ponder your own reactions to me is the essence of being human. It's the foundation of everything. It's the foundation yeah. of art is introspection because as much as the, we have vastness of worlds outside of ourselves, unconscionable how tiny we are compared to everything outside of ourselves. Yeah. And yet we hold our mobile phones and we have everything in the palm of our hand and look at the scale. The scale is completely off. Right, we are the tiny ones. Yeah, but it's truly. but it's nothing. It, it, but then it, we have that nothing. depth, that depth and breadth within us as well yeah. that we can find. We are, the, you know, you asked why? Why do we go there? Why do we have this experience? I think it's because we are the center of the universe. Each individual, as mm -hmm. we yeah, are physical, yeah, in the physical, we become the center of the universe, mm -hmm. right? And so we have this this gift to be able to develop a unique perspective mm -hmm. now we I, I can't believe an hour has passed i i could talk with you for hours yeah. and more. um we can do it again we, can do it. we will no we'll definitely do a part two um i always end my podcasts asking my guests to graciously offer three practical tools that you have learned I mean, it could be something that we've touched on or it could be something we haven't yet talked about, but a lot of people are struggling right now. A lot of, it's why it's called the Lost Traveler podcast, mm -hmm. because we're all feeling like lost travelers. Mm -hmm. And this, like you said, you know, every, every challenge brings with it an opportunity. And if we can take this moment of challenge in the world, wherever you are and whatever it is mm -hmm. that you're challenged by, here's an opportunity to try a tool that someone has found that works for them to make things better, easier. You can't use these tools the way we do, but you can synthesize our tools with the ones you already possess and maybe elevate your proficiency in life skills. Yeah, I, I, I would say, I, I would say what I said before, uh, be conscious, it's a conscious, nothing to do, no homework, no practicing or whatever, it's just, a, you're human, you you have to suffer. The, not sacrifice, but but because the suffering is one, it's like a wall. Aha, uh, there's a wall. I can't run into the wall. I need to change my direction a little bit. The perception. <laughs> uh, the perception. So and, and then life isn't sunshine. So because you can never be when you say I'm unhappy. And if you don't accept that, you can never become happy. So when you can accept my human condition is number one, it suffering is involved as something good. Get comfortable with the uncomfortable because it's like a wall. It's like a, a wall trigger. So, so aha, change perception. Also, don't think, don't go in my mind uh, 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 constructs of past and future. Uh, observe observe your uh, you know that comes all to the first point just just to observe uh be the observer be the observer and and and, and look and accept that life is not you can't buy li happiness or fulfillment from a system you can read a million books about love you will never when you never felt how to be what it is to feel love you can read libraries of it. You can have Google. You have you have it all. Why? So wisdom is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is very limited. 
Yeah. And wisdom is experiential. It's, it's. I cannot talk about podcasts if I wouldn't have uh, Henry Cameron's uh, talk right now. I couldn't. I couldn't talk about. You know, uh, I wouldn't know what it is. I, I would say, okay, there's two people talking, but I don't know what the experience is. Right. And I think the, the look at art, not you know, see art as your inherent superpower. And um, don't. And, and, and try to understand that what you perceive as art is the system of art business. And it's like a, a Walmart or a, a store that, that, that sells you the product already. Right. So try with simple things, singing, dancing, do a theater like you, uh, whatever you're drawn to, have a practice. It's better than any meditation Nothing brings you more in the moment that no spiritual practice brings you more in the moment except breathing than uh, than uh, art, creating art. That, that, that you will, if you want to experience humanity where your ultimate power is, uh, do, create art some in some way or form. That's why little kids are drawing because they're drawing and drawing and, and, and painting so much because it puts them in the moment they feel good. Because they're yeah. indeed inundated from system conditioning of their parents and everything else, and when they paint, they stay they stay you know feel feel good. And, and feel art, good. art art doesn't need to be putting a brush to canvas. Art can be cooking. No. Art can be gardening. Art can be absolutely conversation, right? Yeah. Go and meet yeah. people. Form a club. Form a group of people yeah. to talk about topics that you can find the common ground. Right. This is something yeah. I'm, I'm really trying to foster, not only through the Lost Traveler podcast, but several groups I have in, on yeah. Facebook, where I'm trying to bring people together to find the common ground of our humanity. And this is a huge step. Michael, yeah. thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Michael is an yeah. artist. He is a an author. You yourself are a podcaster. It's called The Smart of Art. Is that right? Yeah, it's part of art, uh, the power of art and creativity. And, and everything up. you get is michaelm.com. I have one hub that's called michaelm.com, Michael with two L's, michaelm.com, and you find everything there. I will put all a link to that and, and other yeah. things uh, that we may have touched on in the description of this podcast. So you can just okay. have a link to... Uh, to uh, Michael's page and uh, find out more about him. None of the companies that we mentioned in this podcast, Apple, Walmart, yeah. are, sp are sponsors of the Lost Traveler podcast yet. But after this yeah. conversation, they may actually be interested in changing the world yeah. with us. Thanks again, Michael. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you again. You've been listening to Season 3 of the Lost Traveler Podcast with your host, Henry Cameron Allen. Visit me online at www.henryallen.org. Thank you to all my guests, and thank you to my listeners all around the world. I couldn't do this without your support. Let's keep striving for a better world together. Together.